hello my leapies welcome to a new video <laughs> not a vlog i don't know i think since purchasing this house and renovating this house for i think we renovated for just over six months and we've been living here for six months i think since the start of renovating um i just kind of spiraled into a vlog marathon and i've been loving it it truly really just fits into my life but looking at some of the past videos and like instagram dms questions that i've been getting i've noticed that we have some new leafies here and welcome i really hope that you enjoy it here that you feel welcome here that you feel inspired it's a safe space and we're just here to like inspire one another and just motivate one another talk about beauty talk about fashion talk about home lifestyle and um yeah it's just it's been so fun i think i've been on youtube for seven years now and it's crazy to think um since posting my first video back then if you told me that i would be here today i would be like you're lying like really <laughs> so i'm very thankful for where i am right now and it wouldn't be possible without all of you leafies so i decided to do like a little instagram q a if you don't follow me on instagram you should i'm also on tiktok but my favorite social media platform although i don't feel like it is like social media because when i watch a video i'm zoned out for the next 30 minutes or however long the vlog or the video is, you can literally, with this video, I'm literally going to sit here, you can pop me up, you can do your makeup, you can clean your house, you can do work and just like listen to me in the background. I love doing that with videos sometimes and I'm so zoned in. Um, whereas if you scroll on Instagram and TikTok, you get so many different sources, so many different personalities, so many different topics. Um, and it can be quite overwhelming. So that is why YouTube is my favorite social media <laughs> platform. And today I'm going to do like a little q and I got so many repetitive questions. I got a ton of questions. So I'm not going to answer all of them, but I'll do them again. I'll do these quite regularly. This is my first sit down video, which I'm really excited about. Oh my goodness. I can't believe yeah, I can't believe we moved in six months, ugh, seven months ago. And um, it's just been so amazing. And again, wouldn't be possible without all of you leave here. So I'm going to dive into the first question. When in your YouTube or content career did brands start reaching out to you to work with them? So I remember creating a lot of content. A lot of content before brands eventually reached out to me i remember that my channel kind of started off with makeup if you've been around for that long and um, slowly transitioned into the things that i want to share the things that i love because jace is not just makeup jace is fashion jace is hair jace is home stuff jace likes cooking jace likes cleaning <laughs> jace likes shopping like i'm so much more than just the makeup i put on my face and um that'll bring me to the next question but to answer your question i did so 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 many videos before brands reach out to me spend so many of my own money to buy their products to create content to tag them and i still do that i still do that to this day and if you are someone that really wants to do youtube for a living which if you are not familiar <laughs> with what i'm doing this is what i do for a living i tell you about the products i love i show you my morning routine and my day and like events i go to this is my career this is my life and it's my passion like i wake up every single morning loving this and like i go to bed thinking about video ideas and like write them on my phone like this truly is more than just like a career for me and i do want to say that if you are considering doing this that you need to do it for the right reasons because when i started i didn't know you could make money <laughs> i mean i spent and even brain he literally bought me makeup with like after paying bills and all of that um which we we lived at home so we didn't have much bills but we also didn't make a lot of income like i remember going to like a promotion job 
being a hostess and being like a promo girl and making like 500 rand and then half of that even more would go to makeup and I would make videos and I just that's what I lived for and what I'm still living for so I would say like probably the first brand that reached out to me was Essence because I did so many videos they noticed me and they were like can we send you some makeup and I was like oh my goodness yes and then um yeah I, I'll have to go look at the dates I'll put the exact um post that I did for Neutrogena that was my very first paid campaign they asked me for one video and I think I did five because <laughs> I was just so excited oh my goodness I was just so excited so I literally gave it my all and it truly says so much about me because till this day if a brand on a brief asks for two pieces of content I will do more like I if my time allows for it I will add more value and that's just me that's just my personality I'm not like a hundred percent kind of person I'm like 110 <laughs> so yeah I hope that answers your question and then the next one any tips on starting YouTube lifestyle content um it's a huge goal that I want to achieve and just start you just need to start like I create content around my life I don't bulk film okay it depends on if it's for a campaign or not um I don't bulk film videos I film and especially lifestyle content creation it needs to be around your life you can't set a day aside and shoot a bunch of clips and then post it you need to post it as you're living your life so live your life live your life and capture it um there is absolutely no tip other than just starting, you truly learn what you like, you truly learn your personality, and you wouldn't know that unless you start. So I would say just start with grabbing the camera, filming your day, just have the camera in your head the whole time. I think I've been doing it for so long now, it's kind of part of me. Like when I look at something, I'm like, oop, vlog, oop, camera. <laughs> I always have it on me. Um, Whereas someone that's not used to it, they wouldn't, they'll like vlog a morning clip and then it's night time and they're like, oh shoot, I didn't vlog. You have to tell a story um, and you have to be conscious about, you need to capture every single kind of page within that story or every single chapter um, and just staying on top of things. But just, it's your life, do whatever you want capture whatever you want and then people know that 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 they could come back for that type of content and then a lot and when I say a lot I'm probably 70% about the wedding <laughs> we have a wedding date we have a venue I will share it with you very very soon very very soon I'm so excited just want to get all of the contracts and all of the like you know everything laid out confirmed but we have a date confirmed um it is next year that's all i'm gonna say i'm a 2023 bride and it's gonna be beautiful i'm so excited i think the time for like wedding content more and more and more wedding content is coming and don't you worry i will share every single detail with you um i'm already like watching other people's actual vlogs of their wedding day to get inspiration like I obviously want to insert some of the professional clips because obviously I'm not going to walk down the aisle with a camera <laughs> but I want to have it somewhere I think I have like two or three vlogging cameras in the cupboard so I'm going to put memory cards in them and I'm just going to give it to people and we must just I just want to share everything with you ladies because I feel like you deserve it and although it's a really really personal day um, it's just something that would make me so happy to have on YouTube and then something I could look back on and then something I could share with you as well. What do you wish you knew before buying your house? Oh my goodness, so many things. I wish I knew before we purchased this house, spent so much money in renovating it and making it perfect that it won't be. It's not perfect. I 
literally can't stress this enough how renovating a house something that you want you spend so much money on tiles you spend so much money on painting so much money on furniture it's not perfect it's man-made it's not like it's and I, I learned so much about myself and I've learned to not be so perfectionist when it comes to things because I want everything to be perfect so I wish I knew that if I wish <laughs> if I knew that the house wouldn't be a hundred percent perfect I probably wouldn't have stressed about it as much um I don't know I think that's I wish I knew that it wouldn't be a hundred percent perfect and then I, my expectation w wouldn't have been so high I love the house don't get me wrong I love everything about it but small things like you know little cornices um like they they crack and <laughs> they're not perfect like it is not perfect the floor won't be level everywhere um it's just it's it's not things that you take to heaven one day. So why stress about it? So I learned a lot about myself and um, I've learned to not be so like, you know, it has to be perfect and be a control freak. So I'm glad that that's taught me, but yeah, I wish I knew how expensive also everything could be, but I learned quite a lot with this renovation and it's safe to say I can't wait I can wait I can wait a little bit but I can't wait to build or renovate my dream home one day after LASIK how is your vision been doing do you still wear glasses um sometimes nope I don't wear glasses I actually I should go get them and I should put them on. I don't even know where they are. I should put them on and see what my vision used to be like because my vision is perfect. It's perfect, perfect, perfect. I don't have to put glasses on. My eyes aren't that dry anymore. I put eye drops in it before I go to bed and that's about it. I have absolute perfect vision. I can see everything. I can see the small little leaves on the lemon trees outside. I can see everything and I'm just... I wish I could tell people <laughs> more about how amazing LASIK is and that's why I decided to share that journey with you and do like a whole vlog about the whole journey like going to the actual surgery and the recovery. It's truly, truly life-changing and if you are wearing glasses and you're considering it, 1000% recommend next how's the wedding planning going <laughs> you see a lot of these ones i kind of screenshotted a couple of them regarding the wedding so we found a venue um we are busy looking at a bunch of different suppliers getting quotes from different suppliers i'm really indecisive and i think that's that's what's taking me so long i want to sit down and do a video trained video a video train video a wedding train video let me know if you want to see that like 2023 wedding trains and my thoughts on them i really really want to do that i saw like someone doing that on tiktok see everything on tiktok um and i want to do that on here but i'll need like i'll, I'll need some time to like gather some resources and some pictures of 2023 wedding trains but the wedding planning is going really good um i feel like the beginning stages of wedding planning is really slow and also i'm really busy um but i have the team at bright helping me plan the wedding which is really really exciting and no they are not sponsoring <laughs> my wedding imagine um please share some of your weight loss tips what you eat and do for fitness super inspiring thank you so much weight loss tips be prepared i prep my protein um in advance i have my protein shake in the morning as my breakfast because i'm not really like a breakfast person and um yeah prep and just I feel like a weight loss, your weight loss journey is so mental. 
so spiritual, you have to constantly feed yourself with positivity, with inspiration, with motivation. <laughs> like you constantly need to feed that because your body works off of that and your body will result off of that. So if you're not motivating yourself and inspiring yourself and getting your bum up and doing the little workout and going for a walk, you need to like push yourself, um, but you also need to not be too hard on yourself. I had a takeaway yesterday because I just felt like it and I haven't had one in a really long time and I just felt down, I felt tired, I felt lethargic and I feel so much better today. Like I honestly, I'm back on track straight from that meal, straight from a good night's rest and it truly is a journey and you need to also realize that as soon as you've messed, messed up, I'm not gonna, I also feel like, um, I've heard someone talk about toxic positivity and it resonated with me so much because I feel like sometimes I can be so positive that I'm toxic um, and I don't want to be that to someone. I don't want someone to feel that I'm perfect. I don't want someone to feel that I don't have a bad day. I don't want someone to feel that Jess truly has her shit together because I don't. I'm also figuring it out and I'm also human. So I'm trying to be positive, but not step over that boundary of toxic positivity. And um, yeah, we're in this together. Like, let's talk, let's vent together. My DMs are always, always open. Will you vlog your wedding? We're jumping around because I just screenshotted them. Will you vlog your wedding or will you have someone film everything? So both, I'm definitely gonna vlog the whole wedding. <laughs> I want to vlog getting ready. I want to vlog like the night before, um, like going to bed with our brain. For our wedding, we're doing very traditional wedding traditions. Like I want to walk down the aisle on the... Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I want to cry whenever I think of that. Um, And then we still haven't like picked like our first dance song we're gonna go for dance lessons like all of those things we want it very like traditional um but I'll share all of that closer to the time so yes I will film the wedding with like a professional videographer like share our wedding day with you and then a wedding day vlog maybe two I don't know the next one is do you have friends besides influencers or is Brain your bestie? Brain is my bestie. I asked him the other day, who's your best friend? Because um, we had like best friends all throughout our early adulthood and things happen. Um, Brain had like a best friend from school. They weren't best friends anymore. I had a best friend from school. We kind of grew apart um, and that's okay. It truly is okay. And I asked him, like, who's your best friend? And he was like, mm, you. <laughs> and I just found that so cute. And it's okay to have your significant other be your best friend because he knows everything about me. I'm open to him. I'm vulnerable to him or, like, around him. He knows every single thing about me. He knows sometimes what I want to say before I even say it. It is so weird. It is so weird. But yeah, he's my best friend. But we have other friends. Brendan and I actually went to the same school. So we have like the same, the same friends. Um, but over the years, it's okay to say goodbye to certain friendships and make new ones. Like, I don't know where our friendship life is gonna be in five to 10 years, um, but for now, we're each other's best friends and we're, we're, we're each other's, um, we have each other's back, but we, we do have other friends <laughs> and we're also very family oriented. Um, like we love spending time with family. Um, hey Jess, hi, queen of quality content, thank you. My question is, did you go to college, uni, and if so, what did you study? I went to the University of Johannesburg for four years. It was supposed to be a three-year degree, but I failed my first year. I failed my two main subjects. That's okay, I've spoken about it before, and something that at first I was really 
kind of embarrassed about. Um, but over the years, I kind of learned that it shaped me into the person that I am today because I just, I refuse to fail. <laughs> After failing, I refuse to fail. I was just like, this, this is not, I'm worth more than that. And I deserve more than that. And I deserve to give myself more than that. So yeah, I went to the University of Johannesburg for four years after university and I graduated with BCom Marketing, which is essentially what I'm doing right now. How do you maintain such a clean house um, when you're always entertaining guests over? So I don't want to take all of the credit for myself because I have a lovely, lovely helper. She comes a couple of times a week. I love her so dearly. She's like my friend. <laughs> like we make jokes all throughout the day and we laugh and I just have such an appreciation and um, what's the word? Like I, I don't feel like I would be able to do everything that I do without her and she's been with us for a year now. Um, we actually found her as we were renovating and then, um, she came like a couple of times a week at the old house, but it was really difficult in a small apartment, especially working from home. So she didn't come that often, but then as soon as we moved here, there is no way I can keep this place tip top shape on my own because I'm so busy, but she always laughs and she's like, it's always so clean so she really just like gets into the nooks and crannies and like ironing and all of that things that I do not have time for but we do tidy up after ourselves like literally when we sit here um and we're ready to go to bed I will shake the pillows I will make it perfect I'll make sure everything is nice and tidy and then when we have guests over um I just tidy up in between I hate the scullery where the dish where the dishes are and where like the dishwasher is I hate for that to be full of dishes and for dishes to, to just stand around so as we have people over I'll do like a little bit of a a cleanup I'll just gather some of the glasses and plates and I'll pop it in the dishwasher I'll put the dishwasher on and then it literally takes me two minutes to unload it and reload it and I do this while chatting to a friend while like making jokes and it truly is just part of who I am like I love just keeping my space clean and also I feel like it just enhances the experience of having someone over because they feel like I feel like there's a little bit of a fine line where I've had to um, just be a little bit more relaxed. Whereas I know if someone comes over and they sit on the couch, I'm not going to go and puff the pillow after they got up. I don't do that. <laughs> um, it kind of bothers me, but I just leave it. Um, but like dirty dishes and food and all of that, I'll just remove and I make it part of the conversation. Um, and I don't make it awkward. Um, and then once they've all left, the deep cleaning starts. <laughs> like I won't go to bed with dishes and stuff in the basin. Like I just, I can't, I just can't. Um, how do you get brands to work with you? So again, so many of these, and it's very similar to the first question that I answered, but I want to just preface is that, you know what? Brands are not going to work with you if you are not showing them what you can offer. So for me, how you can get brands to work with you is to showcase on your page, on your Instagram, on your YouTube, on your TikTok, show them what you can do and buy their products, buy their products, mention them, tag them, even send it to them multiple times. If you want to send, if, if you created a video, you could send it to them and say, this is what I created with your product. Love your product. I personally am very, very thankful that my work speaks for itself. And I put out that energy every time I create, even if it's just like a story, even if it's just like a random unboxing or like a mention in a vlog I put out that energy that I love this brand I love this product and that they will see it and then hopefully they will work with me um, a recent one was with LG we purchased some of um, 
our appliances from LG and when we moved in and I was like this is my manifestation I'm gonna like show my washer dryer in my content and I'm gonna make them see me and they reached out to me recently after six months <laughs> so for six months I was like randomly sharing it and I was tagging the brand when they reached out to me to go to an event I performed I was like I'm doing a reel I'm doing a vlog I'm doing a still like a picture and I'm gonna send it to them tag them hopefully they see it and they saw it they saw my work and they reached out to me for a possible campaign fingers crossed fingers crossed ladies um is the influencer industry oversaturated do you feel it's going to be around for a long time i do think so i think that being an influencer can stay around for a very long time it's been around for a really long time as well but i do think that it's becoming a bit oversaturated um an influencer isn't something that you can necessarily study for or how do you become an influencer i feel like an influencer is something that you are you either influence people with your personality your vibe your voice your style the way you talk the the way you kind of carry yourself or you don't um you can't be i feel like you get an influencer that influences um products, lifestyle, kind of things that they love. And then you get an influencer that is just like, almost like an Instagram model. And um, I think those are completely different things. You get like Instagram models that have a lot of followers that nowadays are endorsing products and all of that, all of that, which is amazing, good on them. But then you get people that truly like pour themselves into their content, that deliver like a sense of value added to the people watching. And I feel like those people are going to last. Um, whereas I feel like the Instagram models, your, <laughs> I want to say Kylie Jenner wannabes, probably not so much. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. What is the one thing that Bren does that irks you? And I left this one in because <laughs> I got it a couple of times. And nothing really like irks me about Bren. Um, but I'm not a big drinker. So um, when Bren does get like a little bit too social, he's like a social butterfly. Um, when he gets a little bit too social, it can me a little bit but that's who he is <laughs> I love him for like his irky bits as well um I just <laughs> like I just cut him off I'm like Liffy on <laughs> I don't know I feel like so many of you can relate with that but other than that nothing really like irks me about him he's very clean he's very helpful like one of his biggest love languages is acts of service so he's very helpful he's very loving he's very supportive um nothing truly like irks me about him because i just i love him i love everything about him i just want to eat him up whoopsie <laughs> the camera died Pros and cons of living with your partner before marriage. I feel like for Brain and I, it truly made us flourish in our own space. Um, I like my own space. And I think if you live at home, kind of, because what Brain and I did after school and with university, we went to university together. So we would sleep over at each other's parent homes all throughout university and then he started working and studied through UNISA so for me I feel that our relationship really bloomed after having our own space because we now had to be responsible and I, I know that that could possibly be a con after moving in especially if you're not married yet because one or the other can essentially just leave and when you break up it's really hard whereas if you're married it's a whole different story but we just 
I don't know, for our story, it was just a little bit different. We wanted to move in before we got married. We wanted to kind of start building our life. And we also really wanted to pay for the wedding ourselves. So we didn't really want to put that stress on our family. And we kind of did it the other way around. And I feel like your religion and your background would kind of affect the living situation before marriage but I feel that it's up to you like um if you feel like it's going to be good for your relationship to have your own space for us it truly was like the moment we moved in together it's it's just like is that my tummy <laughs> it was just different and um we had our own routine, so I guess the pros would be that you get to know each other really well and you can really decide if you want to be with this person for the rest of your life because let's be honest, you don't know a person unless you're living with them. If you also want to get to know someone, go on vacation <laughs> with them and like spend like a couple of days with them in the same house under the same roof because that's how you truly get to know someone. So you get to know him or her and know if you really want to spend the rest of your life with them. Um, another pro would be, hmm, you learn to grow up a lot quicker if you live by yourself and even better with a partner. You learn to kind of divide responsibilities. You learn to coexist. You learn to kind of help each other um, and just kind of try and be a helping hand towards your significant other. Some of the cons that I can think of is you can really get to know someone and find out that maybe they're messy, maybe they're a little bit... Um, <laughs> and you can have different preferences on how you like your house to look like for me luckily brain really doesn't care <laughs> I can do whatever I want um but yeah I think there's a lot of things let me know in the comments down below if you can think of any pros and cons but those are those are the ones that jump out to me it truly was like a game changer for Brain and I to move in together and it made our relationship flourish how do you keep your place so clean when you're busy I don't know why I screenshotted this but same as I said before I really just I tidy up as I go and I do have a dump room sometimes like <laughs> in the apartment the spare bedroom but the beauty room was kind of like the dump room sometimes so I kept the mess in that room here yeah, sometimes it's the guest bedroom and the studio but I'm trying to be better trying to be as organized as I possibly can be but some spaces are just a non-negotiable for me the kitchen the living space our bedroom it's literally a non-negotiable I can't go to bed at night with the bedroom having clothes everywhere I would rather just move the clothes to a different room um it would be better better to just pack those clothes away but um yeah I'm not perfect how do you get brand deals and make an income from being an influencer if you are a beginner. Unfortunately, you don't. Um, I screenshotted this because it was very similar to the other ones. And I wanted to kind of um, touch on or like extend that conversation. Because to be honest, if you are in certain careers like this one you would need to put in a lot of time and a lot of effort into getting started so number one get started number two stay consistent with whatever topic whatever niche whatever vibe you're going for stay consistent um i remember since starting i don't think i've ever gone a month without posting a video in seven years I don't think so. I'm hoping, yes, I'm positive. I'm positive that I've never skipped a month of posting. In the beginning, I posted like a video a month um, or like two videos a month. 
and it was just like a random makeup look and I used my own money, I still use my own money for half of the things I buy and I truly only recommend things that I love and spend my own money on and brands and products that I would truly recommend. I always get this question like, how is it really? Like, do you really recommend, like, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm not just accepting brand deals and I know some influencers do that and that's probably because some of you ask that but for me personally if I talk about a brand if I mention it um then I recommend it and I would spend my own money on it even if I got it for the campaign and I didn't necessarily pay for it myself I would pay for it <laughs> hence why I'm sharing it with you so if you're a beginner, it's really hard because you have to invest time and money into creating content, um, but there's a lot of loopholes. Let me share them with you. If you want to do fashion, you don't necessarily have to, and TikTok makes it so easy for us because it's so like, you know, raw and real. Like you can go into a shop, like a fashion store, and you could pick a couple of items, go to the changing room, share like a few outfit ideas. You don't even have to buy anything. That's content for you. That's content. Um, you love that just because you don't have the money right now to purchase all of those products. And I know what certain um, content creators do is they purchase a whole bunch of things, try it on, share content. I don't do that, by the way. Um, and then they send everything back. So if you want to do that, that's a little bit of a loophole. Um, and just kind of being creative around sharing content um, and just being consistent with it and showing your passion, showing your interest. I feel like what would be easy is to pick something that's relevant in your life. So maybe you're a, maybe you're a fashion designer, or like a, a someone studying fashion design and you're busy getting your degree you could always go to shops and like share your journey share a day in the life of a fashion like day in the lives are so underrated because you're essentially sharing um what you do and it doesn't necessarily cost any money just effort but you can literally take people along but then um sometimes those like I try doing vlogs in the beginning and those type of content pieces are really hard to kind of um, move feet towards you, feet, eyes. Um, but just to have that consistency mindset and just knowing that you don't necessarily have to spend money on creating content. Um, and it's it's so... Like, what do you do <laughs> when you're a beginner? I would definitely not leave my job to be a full-time content creator if you know that you could make a full-time income off of it and pay all of your bills because essentially I'm getting paid month to month. So this month I could earn half next month and then triple the next month. Like it's it's so un reliable <laughs> and luckily brain has a consistent income so we know like most of our like all of our expenses are covered and that's always been the case for us I did promotion jobs and I could like kind of pay certain things and I started a business and brain worked so we we could kind of support our lifestyle back then um so if you are a beginner in content creation, I feel like I'm rambling with this topic, but it's it's so difficult to think that I want to be a content creator, but I don't know where to start. I don't have the money. I also didn't. I didn't. And I feel like the best time to start is probably when you're still living at home. But you need to get out of that mindset of, lounging and you need to work you need to really put in the time and the effort and you will pick you will reap the fruits of it eventually would you uh would like to know 
where your house where in your house is the studio located so this is the living room the rooms are on that side and then the garage is at the back here so on the other side of the garage is the studio so it's like a flat like a granny flat um kind of vibe <laughs> it has its own bathroom it's not necessarily connected to the house like you need to ooh, you need to go outside of the house to um go into the studio would you consider having small dog as a pet i did i did i did i did but to be honest with you i don't think so because i'm such a clean germaphobe the hair everywhere i just couldn't i just couldn't i don't bren and i spoke about it and then he's like but you if you have one you're eventually gonna get another one and then i'm like no but i don't want two dogs i just want one um and i'm also such a control freak um it's sad it's sad to think that i'm such a control freak that i don't I don't really want a pet to like and I know they can bring so much love Brain's parents have a lot of dogs and then my sister-in-law I mean they have four little Pekingeses and they're so cute I love cuddling them I love dogs but when I get home they don't shed a lot and they're very clean but when I get home I'm like I'm not going to come sit on my couch. <laughs> I take my clothes off. I put it in the machine or in the, the bin. And I think it's just like a mental thing for me. Because I didn't grow up with pets in the house. It wasn't like my mom didn't like it either. So I think I kind of get that from her. So for now, no doggies. But who knows? Who knows in the near future? Um, but I'm not sure. I'm very, I'm very indecisive. Um, I think I would rather, have, I don't know, would, would I rather have a baby than a dog? <laughs> I don't know. I think both of them are kind of like the same thing. When do you want to start a family in terms of children? Um, Bren and I are both on the same page and we think maybe three to five years after getting married. So 24, 25, 26 yeah, between the year 2026 and 2028, I don't know. I don't want to put a timestamp on it, but that's more or less where we are right now um, and where our minds at. We really, we really want to enjoy every phase of our lives and we want to travel a bit more. The pandemic kind of held us back from traveling for two and a half years. So we really just want to enjoy traveling and I feel like traveling with a baby is, although it's a blessing in itself, like you wouldn't, I spoke to my sister-in-law the other day and she was like, she loves, I feel like it's, you can't explain that love until you have your own child and I understand that, um, but everyone is like, everyone always says, you will never be ready for a kid until you have one because if you knew what it's like to have one, you probably <laughs> won't have one because it's it's not like a couple of hours a day. It's a 24-7 job. It's no race. Like you're constantly raising this human being nine months in your tummy and then for 18 years <laughs> in your household. So um, we don't want to rush it but we're leaving everything in God's hands after the marriage. If it happens, it happens. Um, but yeah, that's ideally. We would like to wait like three to five years. Did you and Brain ever break up or did or had a very time in your relationship? Tips and advice. Yes, we did. Um, no, we didn't break up. No, we didn't break up, but we had a hard time. <laughs> we had a hard time, but we didn't break up. We've never been on a break. We've never broken up in 11 years. I think that's kind of, you know, an accomplishment because you get angry sometimes and in heated conversations, by the way, we don't have heated conversations. We never shout at each other. We never raise our voices. We never like bad mouth each other and say like, but you're this, but you're this. And no, 
we don't do that we are very respectful of one another we don't fight um we don't fight a lot but when we do it's about really small things and i also think it depends on what time of the month it is because sometimes i'm just not less for anyone including brain and then he's like but what why are you like this like da -da 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 -da. so tips and advice just truly treat each other with love and respect and um compromise compromise on whatever it is in your relationship if he likes going out with brains you like staying at home find a middle ground like today brain is um at cricket and I was like, I'm not going with, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to film my vlogs. And then later on, my vlogs and my videos, and later on, we can catch up again, and then we can go to friends. So it's just having like that common ground and respecting each other's time and respecting each other's likes and dislikes. I think that's really, really important. But we did go through a really difficult time where my career... And this is very personal, but I'm sharing this with you, Leafies. My career, this was a couple of years ago, my career really took off. And um, Brain was like, Brain is very family and friend oriented. He's very much like quality time, not so much work, 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 work. Whereas I am so passionate about what I'm doing. I will literally, I'll go to a braai and at a friend's, a family bry, and then everyone would just like sit around, not talk, and I would like start editing a video, edit a picture, which I don't do anymore because I learned that we don't have everyone around us forever, so we need to appreciate them. And um, we just sat down and we had a conversation and we were like, I'm going here, you're going there. Like, what is our career separately, holistically? What is that doing? And we had to sit down and have like a serious conversation and he left his job and he looked for something that he really liked. And that just truly, like it gave me goosebumps because this man, and my mom always said, if a man will change and not change by his personality, but like things and direction in life and all of that. If a man changes to have you, he will change to keep you. And that has truly stuck to me all throughout my life. And I think can work with anything really. If someone adjusts to, and it goes both ways, if someone adjusts or changes things to be in your life, they will do it again to stay there. And that's really important. And I think that was the last question. I really hope you ladies enjoyed this one. <laughs> it's probably a really long video and my tummy is like rumbling. I need to go make myself some lunch. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again very soon. Mwah! The next video will be a vlog. <laughs> Bye ladies.